everybody and welcome to the second uh, live pitch session of the day here in Barcelona at Giant 2021. My name is Pilar Fernandez Hermida, founder of iExpand, and I will be your MC today. We will hear from five exciting companies stemming from, no surprise, two of the most uh, innovative ecosystems in Europe. So we'll hear from five companies both, uh, from UK and one from uh, Sweden. As to housekeeping, uh, uh, a few tips. Uh, we have uh, five minutes for each of the pitches and five minutes for Q&A. Um, for our panelists from before, you can ask questions live uh, with a micro on or uh, just in the chat as well. So let's get this started. And uh, coming up, uh, we have our first speaker of the day. So a big clap, a virtual clap of applause uh, for Emmanuel Raptakis from DeepMeg in the UK. Uh, just as a quick introduction, um, Emmanuel will talk to us more about this. Um, basically, uh, DeepMed addresses uh, precision medicine using ML, and more specifically in the area of uh, diagnostics, imaging diagnostics and oncology. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. I do hope you can hear me, you can see my presentation. You, you can see my presentation, right? Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, so, good uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> A suspected cancer diagnosis is an emotionally testing time for patients and their families, marking the start of a journey through a maze of diagnostic procedures, surgery, and decisions about therapy. Cancer services are currently overloaded. Health professionals are stretched. Uh, the choice of diagnostics and therapeutic options has become more and more complex to navigate through. And the pandemic has just made things worse. <clears throat> it is now accepted that uh, by most experts that machine learning can and will play a significant role in improving the accuracy, efficiency, and quality of most stages of cancer patient journey, starting from histopathology, which is uh, the immediate focus of deep med. Histopathology is a crucial link in the cancer treatment chain used for staging and grading tumors and helping to match the best therapy with each patient. Since 2017, DeepMed has attracted more than 1 million funding uh, through the SPRI program in the UK, collaborating with uh, NHS Trust to make the first steps in digital medicine in terms of supporting histopathologists, specifically to identify metastasis in lymph nodes and assist with disease staging. Our, our award-winning machine learning models can improve accuracy currently at 95% and targeting 98% plus, and save time currently two times, uh, targeting towards uh, three to four times, at the same time while keeping the expert in the driving seat. With our first product for breast cancer currently ready for market launch, DeepMed has developed methodologies, strategies, and intellectual property to extract valuable information from, from histopathology images. Such information and methodologies are the foundation of our plan to develop products for direct relevance in each step of a cancer patient journey, accurate, fast, and personalized. Deep Path Lydia is our first product currently about to reach marking. Our model scans the images, finds all regions of interest, however well hidden, and presents them to doctors for confirmation. Our validation show that Lydia helps experts deliver diagnosis in less than half the time and with higher accuracy. DeepMed is ahead of the competition by using unsupervised learning with generative adversarial networks to deliver the first pan-cancer solution, which can be used across all cancer types, increasing Lydia's total addressable market fivefold. This gives DeepMed a unique competitive advantage even over companies with a strong fundraising track record. At the same time, DeepMed's products work in a complementary way with uh, a lot of, uh, of those of our competitors, creating integrated solutions for clinics and patients, creating clinical critical mass for and accelerating the attraction for the whole sector. Our product is engineered to work with any, health, uh, any hardware and to deliver its results within the large-scale software platforms that are found, uh, favored normally by the large hospital end users. Lydia has a compelling value proposition for all stakeholders. Its simplicity, its unobstructive method of delivery, and its decision support nature makes it an ideal entry point for AI solutions in clinical workflows. 
The business model has a strong uh, SaaS element with uh, all the associated benefits, including very high margins and high customer lifetime value. The global uh, total accessible market for Lydia is around half a billion pounds. Cross-selling of our subsequent products is a strong element of our long-term strategy. For example, our plant recurrence prediction product family on its own has a time of one billion pounds in a market with expected growth rate of more than 13%. Our sales channel goes via integrators and local distributors supported by our internal expert sales team and strong in-house customer support function. A key component of our market entry strategy is our close collaboration with system integrators with the capacity to provide end-to-end -end solutions to large trusts. For example, we are working closely with Fujifilm in the UK, having participated in common advertising and promotion to several NHS trusts with considerable success. Others include Philips, Sectra, How Much You Like, etc. The pandemic has accelerated uh, the introduction of digital pathology in the NHS and other major markets. There are currently many trusts that bid for installing histopathology infrastructure with AI solutions following right after. We're lining up trials with selected trusts, for example, Nottingham University Hospitals, as well as uh, smaller size independent pathology labs. Same trends emerge in other major European uh, markets. We're already in discussions in France and Italy with trusts looking into digital histopathology solutions. Our leadership team includes individuals with distinguished careers in academic, entrepreneurial, and global corporate positions, and a world-class record on machine learning applications in biotech and healthcare. Being near revenue, we look for a bridge capital injection of 500,000 pounds, primarily to support market introduction activities until a multi-million multi Series A uh, raise, which is planned for uh, early 2022. This will allow us to deliver on our product roadmap and extract value from our know-how while creating high impact solutions and improving outcomes across the patient journey. Please get in touch with a more in-depth information pack for a more, uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Um, really amazing and you managed to uh, provide a lot of insights. Uh, do we have any question from the public? If not, I have one. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I really like your business model. It looks very, you know, you have done your homework, you know, in terms of the integration. But I would like to ask you about the integration into the pathways of workflows, which is one of the biggest areas of pathology. How um, how do you plan to convince pathologists to adopt these solutions? We chose uh, the lymph node metastasis detection very specifically uh, over a very, very broad uh, uh, menu of, uh, of uh, problems that we could go and solve in the first instance. And it's one of the ideal ones because uh, it's a boring task. They don't like, they don't really like doing it. Uh, it's something that is extremely important because it needs to, it's necessary for staging the cancer. And it, it is like uh, looking for a needle in the haystack, literally. Is, is the proverbial needle in the haystack problem. And uh, uh, by, the, by, by the way we're delivering the solution, we are just turning their attention into the regions of interest. And, and in one second, a trained pathologist can tell us if that is what, what, the, what the software picked is a, is a true positive or a, or a false positive. And uh, biasing the models towards uh, accuracy, uh, that makes them you know, literally finish the, finish the task much better and with higher accuracy overall. Um, and it is a task that is, uh, is under significant time pressure. That's one side of things. It's an ideal, uh, uh, there's no black boxes to worry about. Uh, there's no nothing to be lead to understand that you don't know how it's coming up with. Uh, it, you are on the, on the driving seat. From that point of view, it's easy to, to start working with. The other way to do it is to make it extremely easy for uh, a lab to, to test it. You know, we have made a, a, a web-based infrastructure that they can upload. Uh, we can create a, for them a, a, their own private uh, place when they can upload uh, their images and see how the thing work, works within a day and uh, makes it, makes it, make, it, make it very easy and uh, painless to, to test it, basically. That's very, very good. Uh, do we have, uh, we have time for one more question, if anybody would like to put the mic up? Okay, then I got another question. I think I really like anyway, I, um, I have worked before. Um, 
you are going to be selling your pass of platform as a service or infrastructure. I don't know exactly the, the packet, but how are you? And then you mentioned that you're going to become a pan cancer, so you're going to pick up a horizontal across cancer. For this particular application, yes. But what about a horizontal uh, in pathology and radiology? Because it seems that these two fields are merging. There is uh, the ultimate goal of, of, of our company, <clears throat> which will probably um, happen in collaboration with other companies or, and certainly academic uh, institutions, is to be able to deal with all sorts of um, um, of data, uh, healthcare data, including diagnostics data, uh, uh, health records, uh, genomics, path proteomics, and, all, and everything else, uh, in order to score uh, potential um, uh, uh, therapeutics. Basically, that, that's the whole game. Um, you have an, uh, you have one. Uh, patient in the end with a lot of information about about, about their state and at the, on the other side they have they have a menu of therapeutic choices and the question is to find the best possible to score the, all the therapeutic options based on the, the information for that particular patient and this is becoming more and more difficult task it becomes more complex and our dream ours and others in the field is to Combine, be able to combine all this information in a, in, a, in, a, in a big way, in a holistic way, and come up with a scoring that will um, uh, be also uh, explainable. There will be a gray box opposed to black box to show how the, uh, the machine learning model uh, found the, um, uh, the links. And uh, I'm sure we will get there as, a, as an industry. Uh, and we probably need going to be a lot of collaboration, a lot of validation, and a lot of investment. So that's why we're here. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, uh, exciting, you. but we need to move on. Faristo. And now we're in the geographic year, year because we're going to Sweden. Our next speaker is uh, Katerina Hedbeck from Tada Medical Relink. And she's going to talk to us how they are uh, basically addressing safety and reducing harm caused by this lodgement uh, incident. Katarina, welcome. Thank you so much. So, Katarina is my name. I'm CEO and co-founder of TADA Medical. Our journey started with the EU-funded uh, innovation program, where we spent eight intense months at the Children Oncology Clinic to identify their unmet needs. The most frequent evasive procedure is infusion therapy. 3.8 billion tubes are used annually in Europe and the US. 10% of these get ripped out during use with massive consequences, adding up to 28 billion euros in unnecessary health consumption. I will start with a short video. Introducing the world's first ever market-ready breakaway connected for IV lines. Tata Medical's really increases the risk of accidental IV dislodgement and enable safer therapy for patients and nurses. Relink promotes accurate doses and avoids spillage. Since it's reconnectable, Relink reduces the time to restart the line and saves valuable bedside nursing time. When we started working with Relink, we saw the needs from a lot of different wards and angles. Relink is a platform technology laying the foundation for an entire product family with a wide application profile in human and animal infusion therapies in both hospital and home care settings. Relink Care is the first ever market ready breakaway connected for IV therapy. It's designed specifically for gravitational IV and bears the seal mark. A clinical trial is planned for later 2021 in Sweden. Relink Advance is created to be used with infusion pumps and all IV fluids, including blood and blood products. Here we're actually working with a hospital in Barcelona, so that's really, really great. We got funded with them in a consortium with other companies from Fast Track to Innovation, uh, European Investment Council money, so that's super great. Um, Relink Closed System is designed for closed system connected device to protect healthcare professionals for exposure to toxic drugs. And it's a stepping stone that we will take after Barcelona. For this solution, we're planning a clinical trial at two university hospitals in Germany. Relink Digital comes with monitoring and communication ability to cater the needs of home care market. Relink VET is, as it sounds, for animal, and it's include a special cap to protect the connector in case a dog patient or other pet patient needs a walk. Here we're collaborating with the only animal university hospital in Sweden for this product. And it's a plan, a plan trial for later this year as well. When the problem is that something breaks, the standard solution is to make it stronger. We did the opposite. 
we made it weaker. The weak link activation where a link separates into two parts prevents the catheter from being ripped from the patient in case of accidentally pulled IV line, reducing the consequences where the competitors are more focused on preventing and working on the effectiveness in preventing a dislodgement. The benefits are many. Safer therapies for patient and healthcare professionals. It's an accurate dose by known infused volume and it's also an environmental responsible solution. The benefits add up to make better life for healthcare professional and the patient, something our entire team value. And I'm lucky to have the best team in the world. My co-founder Rebecca is a CEO and has a PhD in engineering sciences. Christopher is a medical doctor specializing in anesthesiology. I'm an engineer with an MBA and the rest of the team is highly qualified as well. Some with PhD and some with a background from top tier consultancy firms such as KPMG and Ernst & Young. Several of the team members have own patent granted collectively if we add the entire team is 87. And when we are as a team bringing together a lot of different experiences required to bring a medtech product to the market. And uh, oops, I forgot a slide disappeared. I will have to talk to that one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we have um, two, six here. Here. There we go. Sorry so much. That's my one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, the distribution uh, part that this is uh, obviously it's really interesting and has caught the attention of a lot of business to business players and we are in discussion with several possible sales distributed channels some of these players are selling to hospitals other are manufacturing and some are both selling and um, Factoring, which would be then a licensing agreement, which would be very easy since we don't have regulatory approval in all different countries. But, but we are in discussion with several of them. And we also presented at the World Congress of Vascular Access uh, last month. And that was also great. We got a lot of attention from different uh, key opinion leaders. Um, I'm jumping back to the last slide. This is the valuable alliances with uh, different um, uh, clinical trials that I was talking earlier. We, we use it as step, stepping stones to actually get to the market key opinion leaders and create value through medtech, evidence-based marketing, medtech marketing, basically. And we're really, really happy with the collaboration partners that we've found. And the money that we will open around after the summer, and we'll be happy to walk through uh, the different revenue streams that we are planning and it differs a little bit because of the different uh, distribution opportunities. We're mapping that at, at the moment. Uh, so this pitch deck will include a few other slides. But uh, we need approximately 4 million euros. One and a half of these we've already found through um, EIB, European Investment Bank. We need the money for adding up more people to the team, commercialization, manufacturing. And we're looking for um, investors from medtech or pharma life science. Um, there are different possible exit opportunities, but one would be with an IPO. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Uh, tak, tak, uh, amazing as well what uh, you guys are achieving. Do we have any question from the public? Live public, of course, if you join offline, you missed your chance. Okay, uh, it's a shy one, but I have a few questions actually. But, thank um, you. <laughs> um, Terina, tell me a bit more about your competition. Oh, there are state of the art today that are available on the market. That would be companies that secure the device stronger to the patient. Secure a cat or tape. There are lots of different that then work on the effectiveness in not having an accident. But once somebody actually pulled the line or there is an accident where the line gets pulled, which is 10% on average, the, the wound on the patient just get worse. There are two American startup companies that are addressing the problem as we are doing. They don't have regulatory approval yet, but they are working on getting that through the FDI in, in the US. Um, they actually, one of them actually congratulated us when we got the CE mark. Yeah. <laughs> so we are tracking each other basically. Yeah. And that's what but I, I, but, but I think, you know, the market is 3.8 billion tubes used. There, there are there is space for three approaches within this market, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we also think that we have a better solution, obviously. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, the thing is, people always say we're the only one, actually. It doesn't have to be the only one. And it's not always good to be the only one because you have to create a market. Yeah, but when it comes to the regulatory part, you need to get into it. And then you have to create, we can basically piggyback on their approach into the FDA. Uh, um, we uh, are, the biggest difference is that our connector is reconnectable. So it goes, it saves valuable bedside nursing time when overworked nurses and, uh, you know, they can just um, disinfect and reconnect to rapidly reinstate therapy line. Okay, uh, we have a question from the public, uh, from Giacomo. Uh, from, um, why are you currently aiming to achieve an IPO rather than other exit strategy? Oh, it's that um, the obvious, perhaps since we're going for licensing, would, would be in aiming for an M&A or, or something like that. That could happen, you know, sooner or later whereas and you you can't just sit away and wait for nothing to happen so we're working with an approach that we call actively wait, waiting and then it doesn't hurt to walk towards an up and oh, oh and if anybody would like you know to disinvest before they could but there are different opportunities yes the answer is one question I had about m &A because it's uh, one road, but but thank you so much. I mean, uh, I don't think we have uh, time for any more questions, but obviously, Katharina, you can share your details if anybody would like to reach yeah. out to you. And congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tak, tak. So now uh, back to the UK but via Barcelona. Uh, we go to our next speaker. Uh, let's welcome Geoff Mullum from Human People. Uh, in the UK. Uh, Human People is a digital health uh, application uh, for uh, precision nutrition. So, uh, Jeff, welcome. Thank you very much. So, hi, I'm Jeff Mon, and I think if you, if you got me okay? Yeah, super. Yeah, so hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Mon, CEO and founder of Human People, and we're a digital health business. Um, and we really are working to put some science back into kind of the the well-being personalised health market. And you know, the way we do that is we we kind of look at people's subclinical symptoms. So those are the the areas that you know you probably recognise in there. We all suffer from a little bit. You know, you're not sick, but you're not 100% well. And so people often turn to self-diagnose and they, they turn to supplements. And in the UK, that's 61% of, of UK adults. But there's a bit of, of a problem with that approach, that self-diagnose approach. Um, you know, this enormous market still struggles to answer that one very simple question. You know, what, what's going to help me? You know, what do I need to take? And what's, you know, what dose do I need to take? You know, and there's a question, where, where's the science gone in all of this? You know, in all, we run um, wellness clinics as well. And when we test these people, you know, a mere 4% of people actually have optimal levels. So in this area of preventive medicine, we take a different approach. Uh, like, like some other companies, we do have an AI questionnaire to pull out those early symptoms, those issues. Um, we then look at certain pathways through DNA and gut health. Um, and actually, we're talking about earlier. We take clinical symptoms, blood markers, genomic risk scoring, and we integrate all of these to really understand where issues might lie. We then offer a solution through high dose supplements, which you can then track and retest. And just a little bit of science, you know, we look at some key pathways, the redox pathways, methyl action cycles, and some of the glutathione conjugation pathways, inflammatory mediators. So, you know, there's real science behind our approach and you can really make a difference with these. We've done all this work on these pathways. A lot of people are just applying these to disease. They're not looking at that pre-disease state, which we know exists beforehand. And our approach is shown our pilots that when you use pure, high quality, high dose targeted supplements, you make it easy, you can make an enormous impact in health. So talking about home testing, a um, couple of neat solutions that uh, we've um, got a partnership with a company Spinoff MIT for this new blood sampling device, which we've just completed validation with Eurofins here in the UK. We're the first company to do that. This is a real revolution in home blood sampling, and we will be running that out. We're also a CQC regulated diagnostic and health screening business. 
Uh, we have our own in-house packaging robot, something that you'd see in the likes of PillPack. We apply that to use the same technology for our supplements. So we're sitting right in the middle of this personalized medicine digital health space and to degree that supplement market as well. Um, you know, who's our target market? And we've really identified three key people who look at this. And it's those at the stage, people who are interested in improving their own health. You know, they have some knowledge, but uh, you know, they don't understand it all. And, um, you know, our route to market is, you know, we're not going to ignore the D2C, but uh, it's very much in partnerships. Um, we run some clinics here in the UK already, and you know, that's our first step. Um, but also we are speaking with a number of strategic partnerships, and those are with wellness programs, gyms, nutritionists, uh, and clinics. On the team side, um, we're we'll trying to cover all those bases, you know, from Alex Sparrow, who you know, previously worked in the Large Hadron Collider, um, to Karen Kidd, who's head of brand for Catherine Nero, one of the big chains in the UK, and one of the leading functional nutritionists, and my co-founder, Henry, who's an uh, ex bain management consultant. So what are we looking for? We're, we've already raised about a quarter of the 100,000 we're looking for, um, and that's to really build out uh, this tech um, platform that we've already built to, you know, really take that to the next level, which makes it much easier to develop further genomic risk scoring panels and um, some of the marketing sales and um, to help us reach that 1 million um, ARR and series A rates. You know, the results that we have, when you reduce someone's information, when you t tweak all these different things and improve that general health, it can be enormous, not just in the physical side, but also on the mental side as well. You know, the, the timing is you know, it's pretty, pretty good. You know, personal health is now on people's agenda. They realize that actually it does make a difference to be healthy. Uh, you know, our clinic approach that we have works fine, but it's expensive. It's cost a lot of time, both for us and for the client, but we're bringing that online. Um, and we've built this digital platform to do that. So at the moment we've just finished our pilot and literally our full commercial launch um, this month of, you know, the. The small number of people who did the pilot and 85% of them are still with us. You know, there's a real reflection point for home testing. You know, it's not widely used. Um, you know, everyone talks about this personalized healthcare and preventative health. And yes, there's lots of platforms out there that tell you to eat better and you know, the different lifestyle things you do. And 100% that's right. But sometimes you need to take those easier steps before you start on your path. So we'd love to hear more from you if, uh, if this is of interest. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jeff, for a wonderful presentation. Um, anybody has any question? Okay. Uh, hi, Jeff. Uh, Francesca Wadke here. Um, it was a great presentation. One of the questions I had, are you looking to integrate other um, health and wellness offerings into, into your platform, um, whether it's, it's coaching or, or mental health, wellness, meditation, those sorts of things to provide um, Kind of a more holistic solution absolutely you know either we join them or they join us you know we're very mm -hmm. much like joining this ecosystem together and you know we looked at doing some of the nutrition and food stuff ourselves but there's, there's some great companies out there doing us already we don't need to repeat it so mm -hmm. you know it's very much bringing this together and you know okay. using some of the digital um, um, as well to kind of measure what people are doing i'm a huge fan of ecosystem bundling so i think that's absolutely. a great approach thanks Thank you. And, and great question as well. And remember, guys, verticals, horizontals, that's the future. <laughs> and I are going as well. I got a question of myself, if uh, nobody else um, has, is um, one of the biggest issues with uh, anything related to nutrition at the moment, nutrition comments, is the lack of trust. Um, so uh, basically, um, how are you uh, validating this clinically or planning to validate it clinically? So uh, I suppose the first step was even just on the home testing device. So we've just done that. We're validating with Eurofins. We're going to publish that data on how our home testing works for starters. So we're testing it properly. Um, and again, you know, we're, we've partnered up with Atlas Biomed for DNA and gut testing. So they've done a lot of validation on work on that already. So again, joining ecosystems. Um, and then the build up of the validation of the rest of our approach is something that you know, we're in the process of doing. 
obviously, you know, we need to get significant numbers through, and that's kind of part of what our raise is for, to make sure that we get those numbers. At the moment, it's, you know, it's manually done. That everything is checked by a doctor, by a nutritionist, before we can get to the stage um, of setting this live to actually do it itself. So everything is very much still in a re review stage. So those are all planned out, and that's, you know, we're in the process of um, applying for an bit grants to help us do all of this as well. But yeah, absolutely. It's the validation which we're super keen to get because we'd like to apply this not just to pre-disease state, but obviously disease state as well. Yeah, but also even in the pre-disease, there is a placebo supplement effect. Um, and then uh, we don't want to replicate that in digital health applications as well, yeah? Well, I think one of the nice things is that because we remeasure, so when it comes to things that supplements, you, know, you can ask people, you know, self-report is scoring is one thing, but, you know, if you say your approach is to help improve these markers, you know, if you're, someone's homocysteine goes down, you know, you can't affect that. So your B12 before it has corrected it. So there are biomarkers you can measure to validate your approach. Yeah, that's very, no, that's very good. Um, so please, everybody, take note. Biomark, bio, biomarkers for precision medicine nutrition. And now uh, uh, we go to our next uh, speaker. Um, we are staying in the UK. Uh, our next speaker will be Srijan Jindal from Fenutest. Srijan, uh, 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 well, Fenutest uh, basically is a point of care device for urinary tract infection diagnostic. So Srijan, welcome. The floor is yours. Thanks a lot. Um, I take it from here to share my screen. Hopefully you can all see that. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Srijan Jindal, and I'm the co-founder and the chief research officer at Fenutest. It brings me an incredible joy and personally means a lot to me to present this venture today, as its foundation was laid five years ago when I started my PhD. Fenutest aims to provide a point of care 30 minute rapid UTI diagnostic solution. Our technical solution is not just faster, but cheaper and more accurate than any other solution in the market or in development. UTI is a well-known disease and it affects over 100 million people annually. Considering one in every two women is likely to encounter this disease at some point makes this a major global crisis. On the left, you see a little brief by a physician who explains the problems of prescribing an antibiotic for a UTI. This involves prescribing an empirical antibiotic, which is often wrong or unnecessary, an information one can only get two days later when the GP receives the correct results. The US-based GP says, and I quote, what should have been a doctor's visit becomes two, three, four week problem. Additionally, about one in five of all the antibiotic prescriptions in the community result from UTIs. A wrong prescription leads to antimicrobial resistance, also considered to be the pandemic of the future. And we are here to address this. Fenutest is a spin-out company from University of Liverpool in 2021, and our patented technology can identify the number of bacteria in urine and the antibiotic it is sensitive to, meaning that we can find if a patient is UTI positive, and if so, find the correct antibiotic to be prescribed, all within the short time of 30 minutes in a point of care setting. We are looking at about five to 10 times cheaper method than any existing technology, let alone the cost it takes to transport the samples to a centralized facility. Right now, we are looking for two and a half million pounds of funding to finalize our device, obtain a CE mark and enter the market. Our solution is backed by a patent application and the clinical studies have been published in a peer reviewed journal. We use computational method and advanced detectors which provide high accuracy and the whole process is carried out without any manual intervention. We have a fabulous multidisciplinary team of researchers, engineers, business management professionals, and clinicians on board who are very happy to take this forward and put a product on the market. We also performed an intensive market research and the feedback was really exciting. 
our technology was quoted to be innovative and vital in post-COVID world by the key leaders in the diagnostic sector. Added comments by clinicians was, when can we buy it? Which clearly demonstrates the need for our technology. In terms of the business timeline, we have recently secured an Innovate UK grant to build a prototype, which is ongoing. Next, we are looking for two and a half million pounds to finish the project development and to do some clinical studies to help our route to market. If you want to find out more about us, you can contact Will or myself and we'll be very happy to answer the queries and share a more extensive pitch deck. In the end, I would like to conclude by saying that urinary tract infection is a major global problem and our technology Fenutest provides a faster, cheaper and more effective tool in prescribing the correct antibiotic against it. This will not only save people's life, but save public health services like NHS millions of pounds every year. We have identified that there's a market for our technology and we are very excited about the future. Gracias. Thank you so much, uh, Sriyan, uh, Dr. Sriyan. I see we have a question. Hi, Don't thanks. Thanks for that uh, that presentation, and and perhaps I I missed this, but um, is the idea that the the solution would be point of care at the at say a GP's office? You're absolutely correct. Uh, we want to place this in GP's uh, surgery, walk-in centers, pharmacies. So any point of care setting, even adult care centers. That's that's our aim. We don't want to go to the centralized facility. Mm -hmm. And, and so as a, as a corollary to that, then, um, based on, on your answer, what, what would be your go-to-market model in terms of, of distribution? So um, we, our CEO, called Guy Reynolds, has been a former head of the HCA Hospitals in London, which is one of the largest private hospital-owned organizations. So mm -hmm. he, along with the clinicians on board, we've got a pretty um, laid out way of going into the market which would be approaching the private clinicians first and then going into the public sector like nhs and we want to deliver our technology you know at point of care as we've discussed before so um that's that's our aim right now so the idea would be that that you would commercialize and go um clinic to clinic selling the Indeed. yeah yeah we are aiming for uh, manufacturing and marketing that's ambitious <laughs> very <laughs> Well, good luck. It's an interesting, um, it's an interesting diagnostic. Thanks a lot. We have time for another question. If anybody would like to, on the chat or. Okay, I got a question for you. Sure. Because well, I like, really, I mean, the market uh, that you are targeting UTC is huge, Indeed. and it's a much needed thing. So I really like the simplicity, but also the big need, you know, and uh, solving a problem, but. Isn't that surprising? I mean, you don't have to, I know you're still cooking the pie, so to speak. Is it going to be an affordable solution for, let's say, less developed countries? Yes, uh, you would be shocked to know, since uh, I'm originally an Indian, we have found you know, the market in India, China, Brazil, and that's the reason that we are not using a very um, high spec detector or mm -hmm. you know, anything that can be, that needs constant monitoring. We are using very simple technology, yet uh, very advanced to implement in a point of care setting. So, you know, you don't need um, pharmacists to deal with our technology. A normal nurse can walk in, put in the sample, walk out, 30 minutes later, you'll have the results. So, no, I was thinking of that actually in India and Asia, because mm -hmm. I know some people clearly there in the area. So it's very... No, and yeah, considering okay. that... Yeah. yeah, considering that antibiotic load is so high in the developing countries, we actually want to target those um, countries really quickly in our route to market because we want to address this problem before it becomes, you know, devastating, as we all know. Yeah. But anyway, uh, thank you so much uh, uh, to you, Sriyan, but also to our previous speakers. I think um, we... Lot. We had a company that could not make it. So uh, with this, we will conclude the, the second live pitch of a startups in uh, Giant 2021 in Barcelona. Please take note of these four incredible innovators. Uh, I'm sure they will make headlines. And as for us, on behalf of Giant, on behalf of ourselves, um, thank you so much for your time and for your attention. 
Uh, thanks to our sponsors and speakers for uh, without you, this event would not have been possible. And see you next year at Giant. I'm back again. It's not next year, but we have a last minute surprise. So we have our last speaker today. Uh, with us, we have John Byrne uh, from Netherlands Smart in the UK. John, the floor is yours. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, are we someone going to share my screen? Thank you very much. I am John from Needle Smart. We're based in the UK. Uh, next slide, please. Um, don't want to read the words on the screen, but if you actually look at the picture, there's a scanner, there's a computer, and the Needle Smart machine. Uh, Needle Smart is actually a software based business with a piece of hardware. So if you think of vaccines, we would scan a vaccine, it would populate the computer with the patient's data, and then we would destroy the needle in the Needle Smart machine. Uh, next slide, please. When we actually burn the needle, which takes about 10 seconds, that creates a compliance record, which has got the serial number of the machine, all the, all the uh, patient's data, even the health professional's name and the geographical location. It's all then uploaded to the cloud and it has clean virgin data. Um, next slide. The thing we do, we burn needles. So we reduce the sharp spin uh, content by up to 25%. Uh, we actually think in the future as well, we might go away from the plastic sharp spin, have more of a clinical waste cardboard box with a liner in it, so clinical waste. And because our machine burns the needle down to a small piece of metal at the end and it sterilizes it, the needle could go into a, a the waste disposal stream, so saving um, a bit of the sustainability. Um, next slide, please. So we have a suite of three products. The Pro is ready, built, developed. It's got a CE mark in Europe. We just did got FDA accreditation. We're a debt-free company and we're ready to go. We, the Pro is part of the DVS system, which is a software system. The software is developed, needs developed a little bit further. We spent 500,000 on IP. Uh, so we've got IP all across the world. What we want the money for is to manufacture and create a sales force, further develop the HHD, which is the second product, which is the handheld device. That's for the home-based market for diabetes, which is growing a lot in the USA and the Middle East. And that's the same thing. The great thing about the HHD, it doesn't use batteries anymore. It uh, uses something called super caps, which is chargeable. And then the third machine, the oblong machine is the PH, that stands for phlebotomy. And we know that there's 30 billion vacuum containers sold in the world that the vacuum containers are used when blood is taken. That machine would separate the needle from the plastic content, burn both ends of it, and put them both into separate waste streams. All of these things could catch the patient's data, can do count of how many needles are used, reorder system. Uh, and the handheld device, we actually could imagine a company, and I'll say Amazon, could be delivering them to your house with the needles and say the uh, insulin, 
the machine could count how many uh, vaccinations you've taken place and not every 10th or 15th, whatever the number is, reorder the next box and the box be uh, like a sort of sharps box, the old sharps go in it and they take the waste away as well. So the market's global. We need quite a lot of money. We need between five and 20 million pounds to complete everything we want. And that very quickly is our pitch. Any questions? Thank you so much. Uh, it's like a, a very interesting, you know, value proposition. I would like to ask if we have any questions from the public or on the chat. Otherwise, I, I do have um, I do have a question actually in terms of um, again the the competitive landscape because there is a status quo. There is a way that people are actually disposing of the needles. There might be also alternatives to what you're offering. Can you put a bit of more, paint a bit more picture on that, you know, was out there at the moment? Yeah, people, people dispose the needles in a uh, waste, in a sharp spin. That's what, that's the system. In. So if you think of the length of a needle, when we burnt it, the actual needle length is reduced. So you get more product in the sharp spin. That's a very quick, easy win. Um, the thing is, it's not a shop anymore. So in airports or anywhere else, they can't reuse them. So it couldn't be used as a weapon. That's one of the inquiries we've had. Competitors, there's people like a needle destructor. They just cut the end of the needle so it still leaves it a bit more like a sharp. They, the, any competitors can't be used in a hospital environment because they give off an electrical spark or static. And when there's live oxygen around, ours does. Ours can be used inside hospitals. We've got all the everything, all the accreditations to prove that. Um, I think the biggest part of this is the vaccination, and not just COVID. All vaccinations going forward. The future, if I can predict, is you'll have a health passport. Members of the public will have their own health record on the mobile phone. That's going to be the future. Um, you need to be able to prove without it being counterfeit that you've had the vaccination. A little piece of paper saying you've had it can be counterfeited. We would create like a key which could not be faked. That would be uploaded as virgin data. So in the UK, the 66 million people, if everybody used our machine, the government would have access to 66 million people's data records, who which vaccine they've had, what dates, what batch number, so if one of them need a recall, you know, they need to say, no, you've had the, the AstraZeneca, that's no good, you need the Pfizer vaccine or the Nova vaccine or whatever's coming out now. Also, they have been able to have the immediate data for flu vaccinations and whatever else is around the corner. And I'm afraid we think yeah, these vaccinations are here for a long time. Uh, I think just traveling abroad, you know, in fact, it adds to security. Even a criminal needs a vaccination and a data record. Um. Sorry, I, I was dropped off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I didn't move. It just the, the internet went off for a few seconds somewhere. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's an exciting future. Um, it's the the potential is astronomic. Yeah, Our biggest traction at the moment is in the United States. Uh, we've got a, a signed agreement uh, with a manufacturer that's F FDA approved. To get FDA took us nine months and one hundred and fifty thousand pounds. We we're the first first medical device in the in the to get the FDA approval for a long, long time. Um, we're speaking with retailers such as Walmart. We're speaking to the military. Uh, they're, they're quite interested for because they can tell uh, the military, they can tell everybody what to do. So, um, and the other place where we've got a bit of traction is in the Middle East and we're quite, uh, 
we're still in discussions, but we we do need sales, but we do need more money to develop further. You know, it's. No, it is me medical. I mean, me medical device is extremely expensive to to kick off. You you answer to my second question. If nobody else has a question, which is about the geographic scope uh, in your plans, um, but you ask something with five to twenty million, which is a very interesting bracket. Yes, <laughs> four hundred. There is a big difference between five and twenty. Um, we, we, we what, can, would you, what would you be? How would you be distributing that money? If I'm an investor listening to this uh, pitch, um, you definitely have a very big sector, yeah. To to target. Yeah. The, to be truthful, we're not sure which how much to ask for. Um, we, we would rather take more money at this round and give away a bit more bit more equity. We need to bring in more to our team. We need to bring in house uh, software developers. We need sales, we need production. If you think to just to make one of our pro machines would be 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. So if you want to build a thousand of them, there's 400,000 pounds. At the moment, if we got an order for a thousand units or 10,000 units, it would take us four months to produce that. So we need to build some buffer stock. Um, we're not talking about one pound items, the four, 500 pound items, and then We'd want to supply the, the scanners and the laptops. So every every DVS set would probably cost us about a thousand to twelve hundred pounds to deliver. So you, it wouldn't be hard to spend the first million pound just on stock. Okay. You know, and then it's developing each world. We need a, we need partners. So India, we we need a rich partner in India to build a factory and supply India. We need a partner for Asia partner for the middle east a partner for, for the americas the uk the nhs sometimes it feels like pushing mud uphill but we're about yes yeah, sorry uh, you, I, I don't want to insult anyone in the nhs it just feels that way and um, but we're about to go on a pilot with 11 nhs trusts and that's the sustainability that's the lower the carbon footprint that's the thing that that they like the most yeah, it, is this, I think actually the sustainability part is probably one of the biggest drivers from the public perspective yeah. as well. Um, but also, like, uh, would you be open just in case there is, I mean, we also have uh, in Giant a lot of people coming from the med tech industry, you know, big companies. Would you be open uh, to co-create something? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so. I mean, we're really, we can design stuff very quickly, that's our skill base. Uh, manufacturing is gonna be brand new to us, although there's parts of the team, we need to bring in production managers, shipping, packaging, I mean, the list just goes on. And um, if you've no revenue, you can soon burn money, so that we have to create, we have to create sales. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, with this, because I think we reach uh, to the end of uh, today's session, uh, thank you so much, uh, John, uh, from Needle Smart. Um, again, you know, like uh, we have five uh, wonderful, um, very uh, exciting value propositions from five innovators. Um, reach out to them, you, the contact details will be on the presentations. And then um, thank you very much. I wish you all a very nice weekend. Thanks, Thanks for joining in and uh, see you. you next time. Bye bye. bye now.